<laughs> yeah, baby. All right, shut up. Shut up. I have a story to tell you. So, Kate Blanchett and I, we were each shooting separate variety magazine story in Los Angeles. She with my bae, Michelle Yeoh, and me with my beau, who you just met, Colin Farrell, both of whom you recognize tonight, when Kate popped into my dressing room and asked if I might present her the Desert Palm Achievement Award actress here tonight. And two things happened. Two things happened. One, I took this picture. And two, I agreed, but I made it conditional that we drive together, which immediately became an achievement competition of its own, as she claims to be a great driver. And I had to remind her that I am born and raised in the fucking city of angels, and that driving is one of my fucking top three. I've driven to Palm Springs and back high and not high, and I've gone to Hadley's and had a date shake a billion times. And so, although I'm sure there are many, many things that Clay Kate Blanchett can say about herself, and she may be under some delusion that her top three includes driving, I will beg loudly to differ. So we met, Kate and I, in Hungary on the future trip bonkers movie that hasn't been released yet called Borderlands, where we were all separated by masks and mylar sheets and long hallways as we were right in the middle of COVID in a deserted Budapest. Now the first day working together in the frigid beer tunnels that run underneath the city, we were walking back to our individual little warming tents when I shouted at her to stop moving as she had landed in beautiful light in front of a scrim and was in silhouette. And as any award recipient worth her salt, she didn't move a muscle. Well, I ran back to my warming tent and grabbed my phone and I made that image of her. In fact, the image that we use for our first image of our nascent promotional campaign. Kate Blanchett knows and loves light and the light knows and loves Kate Blanchett. But what she is most famous for are motion pictures, which require movement and expression and emotion. And with Kate Blanchett, there is a kaleidoscopic internal drive mechanism that makes her such a compelling performer. Watch Lydia Tarr in the opening images as she is about to conduct at the beginning of the movie. There's no dialogue. It's just Lydia in Lydia's mind and Kate Blanchett's physical and emotional interpretation, I think it's her most complex portrayal yet. Tar is a self-described U-Haul lesbian and a brilliant conductor and composer and we lucky viewers through Todd Field's beautiful camera lens and gorgeous external world, we get to watch Kate peeling away the layers of Lydia's mental and emotional onion. It's an incredibly brave performance. It's unflinching and shocking and riveting and so sad. And like all of Kate's work, it's a revelation of the complexities and contradictions of the human condition. Now the award bestowed upon Kate this evening is for but one of a lifetime of experimentation and excavations in a prolific set of human portraits she's given us in 95 films, television, and theater portrayals. So she was preparing Tar while we were working on this video game adaptation, Borderlands, in Budapest. And she's with snarky one-liners and guns a-blazin'. 
You know, her Lilith is a rogue outlaw with flaming red hair and a swagger that would make Captain Jack Sparrow blush. But, unbeknownst to our entire merry band of film family, amidst all the fun and fantasy and chaos and Kevin Hart, every, every weekend she would spend listening to music, moving her hands in a conductor's dance, learning the piano, learning German, and starting her preparation as she was headed next to film Tar in Berlin when we completed our movie. Now, she didn't tell me much about it, but I knew it was important to her. And I was fascinated as her student to watch her from afar, sitting in the cavernous sound stages, listening to Jacqueline Dupre starting the work. I feel so privileged to have seen the first movements of the conductor that she gives in Tar. Oh, there's a picture of her for me. As an artist, she's extraordinary, but what most of you don't know is who she is as a person. She's a person. Kate Blanchett is a person. She's a real live person. She's a dedicated mother. She's fierce in her love and pride of her children. She's deeply in love with her partnership and her husband, Andrew Upton. And the other thing you need to know about Kate Blanchett is she's girly and she's silly and she maybe secretly looks at Instagram through a character's alias and is obsessed with sunglasses and antique shopping and is quick to kick off her heels and has a really funny kind of monkey-like presence, a strong hug, and will pull a face and crack wise and is open in her love of her job, her colleagues, and at the exact same time, she can drop you into an emotional response in an instant with a glance like she does in Tar. So, there are many things that I count myself lucky for, having met her, having worked with her, and now calling her friend, but there is one small thing that I get to dine out on. I, Jamie Lee Curtis, Nepo baby, I am the only person in the history of cinema who has ever been given a facial by Kate Blanchett. <laughs> yes, it's too long of a story, and it's true, and there is photographic evidence, so I, I think it's safe to say that if she ever loses her day job, she may have found her second calling. She also loves to play dress up. I swear after watching Tar and Kate's incredible physical presence in those slacks and blazers, all I wanted to do was go to a tailor and have bespoke suits made me, for me so I could ditch all these other trappings and fancy frocks and frills and my cleavage and just wear suits. And yet, when we recently worked together for that variety shoot in Los Angeles, albeit separately, I carried in my single cream satin Yves Saint Laurent skirt and a black sweater and a little hanger, while she and Elizabeth Stewart had a room full of clothing and shoes and colors and choices, because that is Kate Blanchett, a talent with a creative container of many emotional choices and colors and fabrics and textures. She is an artistic revelation. There are very few people whose work I cannot wait to watch, and Kate Blanchett is one of them. So it is crucial that you recognize her work in Tar here tonight for her many talents as an artist, as I will fondly remember her talents more as an esthetician. <laughs> so don't let me blather on a second longer. Let's take a look at the maestra herself. Please watch Kate Blanchett. I'm the better driver. It's a fact. In fact, we almost didn't make it here tonight because Jamie insisted on repacking my bag. She was appalled by my, what? I didn't even know what was wrong with my packing, Jamie. But anyway, you had to do it. And then we had this really lengthy conversation, uh, a discussion about whether I should get into my pajamas because we're driving back together tonight. I'm going to do the driving because um, I'm not high yet. 
And, um, <laughs> meow. Um, and or you know whether I should wear pajamas or clothes. Meanwhile, she's telling me this about what I should wear, and she comes out in her bra and knickers. <laughs> that is why we nearly missed tonight's uh, event. But thank you so much, Jamie, for making the trek, and thank you so much to um, Palm Springs for having me uh, here. Um, it's an incredible honor. Um, you know, uh, Best Actress, yes, it is an incredible honor. Um, uh, and I, anyway, I do feel so blessed that our paths have crossed and that we ended up in Budapest, um, the place where I also got the chance to be with Nina Hoss, speaking of best actresses. I mean, these things are wonderful, and I am deeply, deeply honored to um, receive this award, but they are arbitrary in, 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 in a way. And I do want to thank Palm Springs deeply, but also to thank all of the actors, actresses, however you identify, who have in this last year, I don't know, the pandemic in some way it was absolutely atrocious and dreadful and no one wants to go back there. But it seems creatively, if you look at the movies and the performances, the incredible idiosyncratic, side-splitting, memorable, heartbreaking performances that have been delivered this year, I mean, I, it's arbitrary that, that I'm up here. And, um, I, you know, I've been so inspired and enthralled by the performances that I, I have I've witnessed so far and that are really seared into, into my memory. And it, it also feels a bit arbitrary to me, that the whole idea of best anything, really. I wonder whether we should change the system. You know, it's, it's such a subjective thing, really. And, I mean, no performance, in a way, stands on its own, does it? I mean, all, all the people who've come up here to talk about their performances have all talked about the crew. They've all talked about the, the other people that they work with. They've all talked about this symbiotic dance that you, you have the great good fortune, and it's rare, um, to, to you have with a, a director. And that is where the performance is born. Because a, a converse, a, a, to me, it's, um, and maybe it's coming from the theater, but I always see a performance as being a conversation. Even if you're in close-up, you're in dialogue, not only with the script and the, the, the larger ideas that are at play, but with the other actors, with the, with the camera operator, you know, and ultimately with the editor. And we had Monica Willey, so we're, we're very blessed there. But I was in the hands, and I knew from the very first conversation, I knew 10 years ago when I met Todd Field, that I, that I was in the hands of a master. And he threw down the gauntlet with this extraordinary screenplay but he is a filmmaker extraordinaire because then he used this screenplay as a conversational gambit and was so alive to everybody's contributions. I have never worked with a, a, a collaborator like, like, Todd, like Todd. And he took this complex, um, ambiguous beast of a film and he wrestled it to the ground every single day with good humor and, and with, a, with such an extraordinary collegiate spirit and he demands the utmost of himself. He's one of the most rigorous artists I have ever uh, met and had the great good fortune to work with. And he quietly insists that we all do the same. Every single person on the set, not just those in front of the camera. And I know how much it costs you to do that, Todd, and maybe that's why you haven't left the barn for so long to make another movie. But um, I am eternally grateful to have been um, invited on this wild and life-changing ride. Um, and the other thing, of course, I mentioned is, is the actors. And um, one of them is here tonight, and that is Nina Hoss. And I think often we, we focus on the actors who have the most screen time, and my character was certainly hungry for attention, so she occupies a lot of time on screen. But Nina provided every single day a masterclass 
in the, in the quality of listening that she has provided throughout her entire career, but has reached some extraordinary zenith in, in this film. And Nina, um, I've said it before and I'll say it again, you are the actress I want to be, and um, I've so longed to work with you, and it was such a pleasure and a privilege to work with you um, on, on this, and it's not the first time. Um, and I also um, wanted to thank the talented, incredibly talented people who gave, I mean, Colin was you know, talking about preparation. Everyone's talking about preparation. No one wants to see an actor's homework on, on screen. But obviously when, you, when you, um, your character is described as a maestro <laughs> in the first seconds of the film, you know you have a lot of work to do. Um, and um, Emiche Virag, my um, uh, piano teacher who I um, played with, you know, two, three times a week and um, showed me the academy and took me to all of Marla's haunts in, in, in Budapest. I'm eternally grateful to her. Um, and, and to uh, Francisca Roth, who teaches opera singers to speak German, who understood the métier in which we were all working, who was brilliant. And, um, and my dear friend, uh, Natalie, who, who was my conducting coach, who was teaching me on Zoom. Ilya Musen, I mean, my God, the master classes that we can all, the things that we can learn on, on the internet. But um, so even though he's passed away, I, I, you know, I had master classes with um, Ilya Musen online. And perhaps the thing I'm, one of the things I'm most grateful for is I have four glorious children, the love of my life, but they are fucking noisy. <laughs> and, and I used to be freewheeling in the car and I'd put on music and music has left my life and silence has been in my go-to place for the last 21 years. So to, for music to come back into my life and for it to come back in via um, Hilda Grunedottir, who extraordinary um, score and the absence of score, um, uh, you know, that, that she provided us, but also for it to come back in with Mahler, um, and Alma Mala, you know, um, was a gift I, I, that will just keep on giving. Because when you, it's, I suppose it's like when you play those great roles on stage, when you play Blanche Dubois, when you play Medea, you become bigger. It's like the Grinch. Your heart grows bigger. You're, you're more, <laughs> you have a, yeah, I'm, I'm a Grinch pretty much yeah, every day at 5, at 5 a.m. But I have, I have grown through, the, through the, the deep, visceral connection with that great music. And there's a lot about the hierarchical structures of the way classical music is made that turns a lot of people off. But these great works can coexist with works that are contemporary. And that just because um, a dead white male composer has composed it, I have read Moby Dick. There, and, the, the, and, and I have imagined myself into that novel. And I am so utterly grateful for the, for the myriad of female novelists that I have read. But I can co I, those two things can happily coexist for me, and they feed one another. And I think to have the past in concert, in, in engaged, interesting dialogue with the present, I do think that that's a real texture that, that, that ta the film Tar grapples with, and certainly I grappled with. I don't know the answer to it. I don't, I don't know that we're ever in balance as a species, as a planet, you know, but we can but try. But the wrestle is all, and uh, the conversation is all. And the final thing I want to, um, well, do I ever want to say anything? I just talk too much, really. But, um, yeah, there, should be, there used to be a hook that pulled people like me off, but I guess it's too far away, it can't go. But the, but the pandemic, I think, you know, we didn't learn anything from it, we're fucking morons. And, but one of the things I think we all learnt as artists is what is important to us. And I realize one of the most important things to me is process. And as, as Colin was saying, you know, it's, it's don't keep your eyes on the prize. Don't put applause before the process. If, the, if you, as you, you know, the way you start something will affect how you continue. And if you start in an inclusive, collaborative, open-hearted way, then you have the chance to make something great. 
And the thing that really is that I realized was so important to me was collaboration. That's why I got into the industry. Um, I come from, like Baz and Catherine, I come from a non-hierarchical filmmaking culture, and I love it. And I, have, I am so grateful um, to every single person on TAR for the extraordinary level of collaboration led by Todd Field. Thank you so much, and this means the world. Thank you, thank you.